Okay, I would call the meeting to order of the Stoughton Select Board agenda dated November 19, 2021 at 4 o'clock p.m. in compliance with Governor Baker's declaration of June 16, 2021, uh, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency extended until April 1st, 2022. This meeting will be conducted virtually via Google Meets for those who wish to participate remotely. Uh, to join the meeting address is there as well as uh, following directions. And it states that the meeting may be recorded at Smack Cable TV and may be broadcast live and maybe uh, live stream at stoughton.tv.org. A recording of the meeting transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceeding will be posted on the town's website and or Smack as soon as possible after the meeting. If live broadcast or live streaming is unsuccessful. Times are approximate and may be taken out of order at the discretion of the chair. So on the motion to open the meeting, Mr. Cavey? Yes. Mr. Carrara? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. And the chair votes in favor. Mr. And Mr. Gito votes in favor also. I'm sorry, Mr. Gito, you're in the line of my camera. I apologize. Mr. Gito votes in favor, and the chair votes in favor. The meeting is open unanimously. So with that, um, is there any citizens request? Dave Laurie. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, David Lurie, 18 Robinette Road. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the privilege of speaking on behalf of myself as a member of finance committee who's uh, leading the uh, working group to develop a financial policy statement for your consideration on, on the board to adopt a recommendation that we make, if that's okay. Well, again, Dave, this isn't citizen's request. You're asking for time on the agenda to talk no, about something. No, as I said, I'm speaking, I'm speaking for myself, just representing who I am, David Lurie, who happens to be on the finance committee, that's it. Okay, what is this, this is gonna lead to a policy that's gonna be enacted, correct? No, no, so I, I, I have some right, comments right, I'd like right, to make right. about- if, if, if these are requests, Dave, again. No. Joe, Dave, it's- li Listen to me, Dave, I'm just trying to keep, I'm just trying to keep this meeting going forward. How much time do you need to discuss this? I could probably do this in five minutes. Okay, five minutes you got. Thank you, sir. On Tuesday, I was I was a little bit um, dismayed at the conversation that was going on within your uh, select select board's uh, comments, and um, I just wanted to bring to light a timeline of, of what occurred this year. It started when there was a uh, a new board coming in, and a decision was made to disband the fire station committee and start a new committee. And um, and then without a timeline of exactly when a, a fire station might be might be needed or or voted on. So the uh, people within the professionals in the town started their committee work. Along the way, over the summer, one of the board members, uh, I, I could mention her name, Deborah Roberts, brought up. Well, before we get into discussions of how to finance this thing, shouldn't we be talking about revenue, where our revenue is, and our debt capacity to use debt service? Everybody on the board sat on their hands when she made when she brought this up. Nobody decided to actually take her up on that, but you guys did move forward on allowing her to become a liaison to the finance committee. So I've been working with Deborah for many, many hours in the library, developing uh, research across the lines of um, things that have, uh, you know, warrant information, budget information, uh, DLS information about statistics about our town to develop some context in terms of what our town is able to do so that we wouldn't have to use an override to pay for all the upcoming projects in order to be less of a burden on the taxpayers. So you, so nothing happened. It was just, it went without a whimper. Everybody just marched forward. Until then, we had a presentation by the town manager to your, to your board saying that you had three options. So you, you decided on a split of 65-35, 
without any consideration of what Deborah brought up over the summer. So there hadn't been any deliberation, but you decided, well, we don't want to be too hard on the budget. We don't want to be too hard on the taxpayers. Let's just go with the middle middle ground. And that's what you guys chose to do. Then a lot was commented about the way in which our standing committees conducted themselves during this, this uh, what I call a hasty process to try to get something on the books where there wasn't a timeline until somebody said, hey, let's try to get it in for November. Eventually that got pushed to December, but, the, but articles were put into place, inserted without consideration of a policy that three members of your current board voted to make sure that nothing gets put in, inserted into a warrant that wasn't ready. There was a policy made about that. But yet we got laden with a bunch of uh, articles that many of the standing boards took exception to because they didn't follow the policy that was there. So after a lot of comments about the way finance conducted itself and certain agendas and all these things, I just want to tell you that as a, as a working uh, member of the finance committee looking to build recommendations for a policy recommendation to your board, I'm hesitant to do the work because it's going to take a lot of uh, energy and, and hours to develop that kind of thing. Number one, you didn't follow the policy from last November. And secondly, the attitude that I heard on Tuesday was taking, uh, taking shots at the finance committee in such a way that I don't understand how any policies that we put forward with this current board, where even if it was adopted, would actually get followed. So I just want to say there's a huge amount of hesitation on my part to keep moving forward towards trying to advance the town with policies that could actually help in lowering, potentially lowering what the bond market says we're uh, worthy of getting for a rating. And, you know, I'm willing to listen, you know, after this meeting and after my comments are made, you know, as to how we can kind of make it work together. But the attitude that I'm hearing doesn't seem like this kind of a working relationship that kind of helps move the town forward. I, matter of fact, I heard the opposite. And that's my final comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lurie. I will respond to you uh, in this because, again, this was not citizen's request, which is not what this is entitled to do. It's not somebody's opportunity to, to get up and make open-ended statements. Uh, I will speak only for myself if anybody else wants to chime in. I agree with you that finding a working relationship is going to be very difficult. I sat in an open meeting at a public hearing of the Finance Committee that was closed officially, and I saw two nights later that we took on a whole new line of questioning with no department heads to answer any questions that we weren't made not even a courtesy of a phone call that we would be you know getting into this again uh, so if you want to talk about a working relationship mr laurie i've always and i do like you we've had conversations like this in the past but it's a two-way street uh, and we did have a meeting with your chair and your vice chair and the moderator in the town manager's office uh, to talk about this working relationship as we move forward so to say that we've done nothing and that you're going to lay this all on the select board, we're faced right now with the need of a fire station. A process has taken almost three years to get to, and we're no better off. And this isn't the first time around. So we're going to do what we can do that we can stand up for and take directly to town meeting if need be, and to make our case directly with town meeting. We have that authority. It, we can put articles forward. And if you want to work about, you know, get into a working relationship, I would say right now, you get your chair and your vice chair. I always sit with our vice chair and we will have a meeting with the town manager on doing what's best for the entire community. But there was a whole new line of questioning. Uh, there was issues of uh, that we don't want it um, put together with other areas. Uh, the bulk, I think they're called, bulked in. Uh, but there was also another article of significantly more borrowing that had the same thing that wasn't even a blip on the screen of your colleagues at that time. Okay, so if you wanna get into a working relationship, a good working relationship is what we've done on this board for the last couple of years as we've talked as a board and uh, we put our egos and our agendas aside to do what's right for the residents. I'm open to work with the finance committee. I have a lot of friends. I, I consider friends in this stuff on the finance committee, you included Mr. G Mr. Laurie, we've had great conversations. I will work with you and your colleagues to do what's right anytime 
at any request. If you all want to sit down and talk about things, we can do that. Okay, so, and again, this is why I always question, this is not what citizens' responses or requests are supposed to be. They were supposed to be, if somebody needed something immediately of the attention of the board, that couldn't wait until the next agenda. Read the minutes of the meeting when they were established. I made the motion and I made that, you know, I made them up. So I know what they are. This is not what it's intended to be. This isn't personal against you, Mr. Lorry, although I think sometimes you think it is, but I'm fitting exactly what these are for. These are to meet the needs of the residents that can't wait until the next scheduled meeting of the select board. So I let you talk and I just want to you know, clear that up anyway. So with that, thank you. And uh, moving on now, selectmen's comments. Is there any comments of the board, Ms. Roberts? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, Mr. Lori and to our viewers, uh, I want to say my full comments until the, the next board meeting, which hopefully we'll start talking about uh, the budget, but actually we also should include a conversation about the policy. And that is uh, this, the Board of Selectmen policy process. Actually, and it's so timely that earlier today, I distributed uh, the policy as we move forward with the zoning bylaw change, which is exactly what Mr. Laurie is talking about. I believe we're all in agreement that we want to follow and adhere to the Board of Selectmen's policy that was voted on back in November 21, 2020, there or abouts. And it kind of lays out the step-by-step. -step. Um, we really need a fire department. The, I, I am 100% in agreement with the funding source, the 35-65 split because putting 100% of that payment in the budget, it just won't work. Town manager talked about how services will be cut. Uh, I encourage people to attend uh, Dr. Grimm's presentations on all of the articles. Um, I encourage people to go on that tour that was led by Fran um, Martisdale and Dr. Grimm it's very forthright and straightforward. Um, but let's have this as an agenda item so we can talk through uh, policies and process and move the town forward. So with that said, thank you very much. Mr. Gito, any uh, selectmen's comments? Uh, yes, I do. I, I, um... I'd like to say a couple things about the meeting that we're uh, we're dealing with now, if you don't mind. Um, I'd like just for a moment to reflect on some importance to the administrative things that we do. Uh, I can remember when uh, when you uh, instructed me, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, about the importance of. Uh, of the Board of Selectmen dealing with electric poles. Uh, and I know that uh, that you and Mr. Carrara spend a lot of time uh, and, and important time dealing with used car uh, lots and so on, and um, really uh, do a very good job of that. And I guess that I would like to say that I think that it's very important the uh, the issue that we're dealing with today, uh, I uh, I got on the uh, planning board in the early 1970s, right after the uh, the zoning bylaw was passed for the first time, and at the time there were a lot of people that were involved in uh, in looking at zoning in the town, and a lot of people that knew an awful lot about zoning. I seem to be the only person left of all the people in town that were dealing with that issue. And uh, my, my email yesterday when I mentioned a fatal flaw in, uh, in the thing that we were looking at uh, may seem dramatic, but I don't think that it was because in fact, if we hadn't corrected it, 
we would have had a come on very easily had a um a lawsuit against the town um and so i i i mentioned that because it's important not to necessarily disparage public comment because you learn something from uh, from the public, whether it's me or whether it's other people. Uh, so I just wanted to raise that as an issue. And uh, that's the end of my... Uh, okay. I will say one other thing. Uh, you know, I could have, I could have said nothing and brought the issue up on town meeting floor. And if I had done that, that would have been disastrous for the article itself. And I think that everybody on the planning board wouldn't understand that. But I didn't do that. Thank you, Mr. Gito. I, I agree with your comments, and um, I think the fact that you brought it up is a good thing. Uh, me looking at uh, just from what I was told, and, it, and I think it is good that you did bring that up. Uh, and that's why when you, know, you wanted the more time, we didn't hesitate to give you that time. And it was definitely, we're seeing now, time well spent. So, and, and I know that the, uh, the town planner and the members of the planning board will be addressing that as well. Uh, do you have any further questions, Lou? None. Okay. And thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Cavey. Uh, thank you. I'll keep this brief, uh, but I did want to make just a couple of uh, corrections to uh, the discussion during citizens' comments. Um, there was a, a mention of us not following our policies, and I, I've reviewed them periodically, and I also just reviewed them uh, as as some of the other speakers were were speaking. And unless I can see a be provided with a specific example. Uh, I think we followed our policies uh, to the letter. Uh, additionally, our votes were uh, for what, what it went into the warrant uh, were, with rare exception, unanimous. Um, and I think the, the full board, uh, uh, even with the ones that, the, the, in cases where, uh, I think the ones that were not unanimous in this case have actually been withdrawn uh, since. So I think that uh, what's currently in the warrant has the full support of the board. Uh, the last thing was that there's a mention that, that that this wasn't just the finance committee, but there were other uh, uh, standing committees that that had similar issues. And uh, though I, I wasn't uh, present for the conversation, the votes don't uh, don't suggest that's true. That the, there's only one other committee that that rejected any of, of these articles. Uh, Intergovernmental rejected the uh, discontinuation of, pay, uh, of a paper street. Uh, other than that, uh, everything, uh, every other article was recommended for town meeting, uh, mostly by unanim unanimous votes by all other committees. Uh, in this, in this case, you know, I, though I, in my conversation on, on our last meeting, I did not, I, I intentionally said I didn't want to single out the finance committee. Uh, in all honesty, perhaps saying that we did is appropriate because they seem to have been the only ones. Uh, that really took an axe to to this uh, this warrant and rejected uh, two nearly two thirds of the articles, uh, with the only exceptions being what I would consider extremely non controversial. Uh, the, basically, the, the vote on the uh, funding of the feasibility study for the South School, which is really a revote of something that passed, is just some wording changes. Uh, unpaid bills, uh, which is like three thousand dollars, I would consider uh, non controversial. And the Affordable Housing Trust, which is a program that already exists and is just getting additional funding by the CPC. Uh, every other article presented to the Finance Committee was rejected, uh, in many cases, by a nearly unanimous vote. Uh, and so uh, perhaps they were being uh, singled out, but it's not because uh, uh, I was treating them unfairly. I think that their circumstances were, were unique, the decisions were unique. Um, I look forward to working with that, that committee. I want to work with them. I don't think that this this particular issue is a problem for our committee. I don't think it's a problem for the town, our, our um, uh, administrators. 
or town meeting. I think that all at the end of the day, I think that uh, what's best for the town will prevail. Uh, I do have a concern that uh, that if this is, becomes more of a, of a, a common occurrence, it will uh, really degrade the seriousness of the finance committee and cause them uh, harm more than anything else. And I think that that's the type of harm that the town will see. Uh, that is my my own personal opinion. I could be wrong, uh, but if if uh, if they reject two thirds of of the articles going in and, and those recommendations are not actually agreed with by by the full uh, town meeting, I, I do get concerned that that uh, this degrades their their uh, both their authority and also really their purpose. Uh, and then we'd have to look at perhaps some other form of government as being more uh, reasonable on an go forward basis. Um, given the amount of time that they put into these things, I would hate to see that happen. Uh, I'm not just saying that to uh, to rub it in or to make anybody feel bad. Uh, I'm being genuine here. Uh, I, I really think that this is, is uh, uh, causes a problem, really a problem with our ability to rely on that committee to provide thoughtful recommendations to the rest of the town, to our board, and to town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Carrara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I wasn't able to be part of Tuesday meeting. I spoke to you about that. I didn't see any of the meeting, but I did speak to somebody about it and I, and I spoke to you about it. Um, I want to say one thing to Lou that and I think Lou was on it. Lou, do you remember the Zoning Bylaw Review Committee? Lou, yes. can't hear you. Oh, there we go. I was I was a member of that, and I I was a member of that through conservation when they picked everybody. We had a good group of people, and for some reason, the committee just stifled. It never went anywhere. I I just don't know why it didn't go. I don't even know if it was ever dissolved. <laughs> but um. You know, we've been looking at zoning for a long time, a long time. And I remember when Lou was on the planning board back then. I was young, but I still remembered it. Um, to touch on finance, it's a little something dear to me. I served nine years on the finance board. You learn an awful lot sitting on that board. And not only does finance have town powers they also have statutory powers that they have to follow guidelines from the state i just wish that people would respect that other committees in this town have different views i know a lot of people want to see things get by but if a committee of that magnitude and that many vote a different way well then it's up to the people that belong on other committees to talk to the other people to turn it around I enjoy seeing all the people on these committees partaking in things, the new people that come in that get on these new committees, but yet every selectman's meeting, I got to hear the same rhetoric. And if I hear it again, I will speak on it. I know everybody has an opinion, but I'm tired of hearing that our form of government is either too slow or there's a problem because things don't get by. Our government is fine. Times are tough right now. Let's focus on what we have to do. And I don't want to hear the innuendos being placed in people's heads so that it gets out there that we need to change our form of government. Our form of government will change when the time is right. Because all these other groups that are on board for this councilor type government, there's not so much going on in happiness that the residents don't have a say anymore. You want to stifle 156 voices because we got to hear every time, well, our government isn't working. No, our government is working. Different questions have to be asked different ways. But when some committees have statutory powers, you got to understand that. I sat on CONCOM, everybody goes, oh, why can't we do this? Well, because you got a book that's this thick that tells you what the bylaws are of the state and then they get applied to our laws so that's that's all i want to say is that 
there is no we're against this group. Why can't they understand my straight line of thinking? I don't expect everybody to agree with me. Matter of fact, I feel like I'm the most on the outside. I don't computer talk to everybody. I got 358 emails on one side and 278 on the other side. I don't even know how to erase them. I don't even know how to send an email. You want me, you pick up the phone and call me. Most people do. But I'm not going to hide behind emails. I don't need that information. I just want the paper. But I'm telling you, I've sat on enough boards in this town, probably more than anybody sitting here staring at me now. And I know how they work. People have to work together. And just because one board that's green doesn't agree with the yellow board, too bad. It's a vote. Doesn't mean it's locked in. Every time we go to town meeting, there's votes that say finance doesn't agree with this, and it gets rocked through because all the department heads jump on board, and it and it and it and it just passes, and it it's like they scare the 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 other members who are new. There's a lot to this job. There's a lot to being a town meeting rep, and and I enjoy that. I grew up with it. I've been a town meeting member since 88. And you learn things. I don't think the government's failing us. I don't think that type of government is failing us. And I don't want the innuendos. You can make them all you want. But there is nothing wrong with it. People are getting services more than other towns. Go to work in other towns like I do. And they drool over what Stoughton has. That football field out there that all of us paid for, you can't believe what people say when they leave there. That's our town. That's what we did. That's what town meeting did. So that's all I'm offering. But I respect the work that everybody does, the people on this board and others. They're, they're passionate ideas that make change that scares people. And then it makes changes that make sense. And then there's the middle of the road. Thank you. Right on, Scott. It, um, let's face it, if we count the people that really are out there that are on these committees, uh, it's you know maybe 60 people you know, on these committees that are active and the people that are on elected boards and so forth. And uh, we're the ones that are out there. And um, if we can't uh, start to disagree face to face and, and and ask the tough questions you know we're, so, we're we're not doing anything and again i can disagree with people i've mentioned this in numerous meetings and uh one you know just not too long ago uh with the differences that we have and that's great it's great but when we can't talk to each other we every one of us fail so with that because we're uh, we are getting into the, the meeting again um we'll go into our next order and i did get everybody right i wanted to double check myself uh, and I will, and um, I and I think I will call because it was my error when we were getting into this um, to, to recognize a couple of people. Uh, we failed to conduct a pledge uh, to our flag, which is uh, you know the most important thing we do when we open up a public meeting. So I would ask that uh, those who can uh, stand, please do stand and join us in the saluting our flag. Uh, I don't know if Steve had one ready or not, uh, which he normally does, but uh, I will call for the the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman. Madam Vice Chair. <laughs> Since this is a joint meeting, does uh, Joe need to call his meeting to order? I just want to check before we move forward. Deb, Debbie, you're talking about the planning board? They they don't have a quorum. Oh, okay. No quorum here. All no right. Quorum. Thank you. I didn't, I don't think it's a joint meeting. It's not listed. No, it's not a joint meeting. Oh, okay. Great. That's Thank you. Joe, you're muted. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, the screen just went blank. I apologize for that. Uh, Miss Roberts, you had a question. 
Oh, I asked my question. I'm all set. Oh, okay. I, I just, I didn't get the end of it. I'm sorry. My apologies. Oh, it was regarding if this was a joint meeting if, uh, and I was told it's not a quorum, so it's not a joint meeting and it wasn't listed as a joint meeting. So I think we're okay to move right. forward. Thank you. Right. And, there, and there won't be any votes of the planning board tonight here either. So that, so we're all set with that as well. So good. great. You know, I apologize that I blacked out on everybody here. <laughs> so, okay. So with that, um, we'll move on and I'll, I'm going to pick up with, um, Mr. Gito, and to make sure that he had, I want to give him the opportunity where, um, you know, he had some conversations. So Mr. Gito and uh, Mr. Chabonneau, uh, and then members of the planning board that want to pop in, I'll just, uh, I'll let you folks handle the conversation, whoever wants to jump first. Mr. McCriskey, could I give my presentation? Because I believe it addresses every single one of the comments in Mr. Gito's email from yesterday. Sure. And I, and I will second that. Uh, Thank you. I can uh, just mute myself here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott. Could could John just give us a quick synopsis of uh, what Lou's questions were not worth? Well, worth well it. Scott, I think it's I think it's easy, Mr. Chairman, if I just if I get into the presentation because yeah. it'll it'll illustrate Mr. Gito's comments. Okay, yeah, because Scott doesn't, you know, he wasn't at the meeting and uh, and again on his emails and so forth. It was a, so I just want to make sure that Scott understands everything that was in that email. So with yep, that, John, I will go through it one by one. Thank you, sir. So here we go. So Mr. Gito's email addressed the fact first and foremost that um, in the new use table for the Stoughton Center District, a use that was not carried over was adult entertainment, and he correctly pointed out that. Along with medical marijuana, um, adult entertainment is one of those bylaws or one of those uses where every town must have some place for it to go um, or else it could open up the town to allow that use in any zoning district. So that was something that was discussed and um, the use was discussed by the task force, the planning board and the working group, but that fact was overlooked. So Mr. Jeter was absolutely right. And so... Um, in doing some research, and Mr. McCriskey, you would ask me to look into this. I went back to the zoning bylaws back to 19, as far back as 1999. And this use has traditionally been allowed as a special permit through the planning board in the central business district. So a court, you know, pursuant to Mr. Gito's recommendation, I have simply added that use back into the use table here for the Stoughton Center District and allowed it as a special permit before the planning board in our core sub-district. And to further explain, Mr. Gito also pointed out the section of the bylaw 8.1 that describes adult entertainment. And if I can just get down to there, this part, item two right here that you see, that um, adult entertainment establishments are to be limited to lots no greater than 150% of the normal lot size allowed within the Stoughton Center District. What this means is in the core sub-district, we have a minimum lot size of 2,500 square feet, but we do not have a maximum lot size. So for other uses, they could hypothetically, someone could come in and have a lot of 10,000 square feet and develop that lot because they meet the minimum lot size. So what this does is this restricts adult entertainment uses to, in that case, a, a lot of 3,750 square feet or down to 2,500 square feet. So it really restricts the size of the lot that such a use could be situated on. So I believe that that's a good provision to keep in there because that really makes the use more restrictive in the core sub-district. So that was Lou Gito's, um, Mr. Gito's first and major point was having this carry over so the town is not vulnerable to this use being allowed in other parts of town. And again, historically, this has been a use that's been allowed by special permit in the central business district. So this is consistent with that. Um, Mr. Gito also had other um, editorial changes that add clarity. And I think they're excellent because they direct people, they direct residents and readers of the bylaw back to the new Stoughton Center District bylaw, something that doesn't happen enough within Stoughton zoning bylaws. So I think this is the first instance under um, use regulations, section 3.1.1, that references the Stoughton Center District. 
again on that same page 3.14 um table of use regulations it directs people to the use regulation table in section 9.34 again under accessory uses it references the stoughton center district in section 411 again um for the Stoughton Center District under dimensional and density regulations, it references the proper sections of the new Stoughton Center District bylaw that apply. And there's another instance here in section 6.11 um, that references the appropriate sections of the Stoughton Center bylaw. And um, again, here's another one at section 6.18 and 6.21. And these and Mr. Gito, I think you'll recognize that these were the changes you rec you listed in your bylaw. I I placed them in there verbatim because I think they're they're accurate and they're appropriate. They are the same. Great. I just wanted to verify that. So um, there's also um, so I believe that is that is it for those. Let me just scroll down to the bottom to make sure. Oh, here's. Here's another one under 8.21 that Mr. Gito referenced. Um, oh, this is a point of clarification that in the Stoughton Center District, the planning board. Actually, these are ones that I noticed, Mr. Gito and Mr. Those Christine. are yours. Uh, yes, this is one of mine because I thought, because Mr. Gito, uh, because of your comments, I thought there were a couple other places that it might be good to add in that the planning board, in this case of the Stoughton Center District, is the SPGA for that use one beating fast order establishment so people don't get confused in other districts it still remains the board of appeals and also for donation boxes so i made um a couple of tweaks to make sure that people are aware that the planning board is the sp acting spga for the uses within the um the stoughton center district so those encompass, I believe, all of Mr. Gito's comments and a couple that I noticed um, as a result of Mr. Gito's comments. One other thing I want to mention, because I know Ms. Roberts on, on, um, at the meeting on Tuesday night also brought up the uses of tattoo parlors and massage parlors. And in looking at that, um, what, I'd, what I'd like to do is I'd like to also carry those uses over into the SCD use table because although they're prohibited in all three sub districts and the only district they're allowed in currently is the highway business district, those are uses that uh, an applicant could come in and consider included under say personal services in our general bylaw. So I, I think that those are two uses that should be carried over into this bylaw, even though they're not allowed they're prohibited in all three sub districts i think that provides some clarity and verification that um that those two uses tattoo parlors and massage parlors and the like are not allowed in the stoughton center district at all and it's consistent with the zoning bylaws that we have in place so if i might if i might jump in here sure uh, um i i made both of those changes uh in the zoning bylaw uh, and I will tell you that uh, I did it specifically so that we wouldn't have those things in the downtown area. And those those uh, changes passed with a very high uh, percentage of the vote. So I would I would suggest that you not do that now. That if you want to do that at uh, at the annual town meeting that you make those changes, uh, but I wouldn't suggest that you do it uh, in this general uh, change. If the rest of the board feels that way, I will I will defer to that. Um, I just thought bringing those uses over and verifying that they're not allowed in the SCD would be adds uh, again add clarity to the to the to the regular to the rest of the bylaw. But if the if the board agrees with Mr. Gito, then I will I will defer. I see Ms. Roberts with her hand up. Uh, Deb, you're muted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, through you, uh, I have a question about process. Today, the intent of today's uh, meeting and presentation is, is to get our approval so you can have your public hearings. Correct? Yes, that's and one of the that's one of the intentions is to have the select board hopefully vote to 
um, refer the bylaw to the planning board so they can review the changes that I presented today. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been in communication with Mr. Scardino and Mr. Kelly uh, over the last couple of days since Mr. Gito's email was received. And, um, you know, they are supportive of these changes. We just need to get the rest of the planning board to agree with these changes so the planning board can approve them. Okay, and then once that step is done, then it will you will have your public hearings, and from there you will they will make their input, and you will have minutes to the meetings, and we will see a list of all of the uh, the additions, the edits that you get from public hearing, and then you will bring it back to us for final approval. Right. That's if there correct. are any changes, abs absolutely. If that's if that's the process, we will absolutely do that. If there are any changes suggested at the public hearings, uh, we just finished um, one public hearing and we did make some changes pursuant to meetings that were held with, again, Chair McCriskey previously, for example. Um, we did not receive any um, public comments during those public hearings. Um, they were more internal um, comments that we received. But yes, we would if there are changes that are recommended, we will we will discuss those. And if they are implemented, we will we will present those. OK, so what you're saying is that you will you are following general law chapter 48. Correct. OK, so in, if that's the case, I would be willing to agree that we should put that. Um, uh, make that edit that you suggested and then see what the public hearing has to say, because I believe in erring on the side of clarity and because this is a zoning and rezoning and the bylaws are very complicated. So if you wanna be more explicit uh, in talking about uh, massage parlors, tattoo parlors or what have you, so it is evident and explicit what you're saying, then I am in agreement with that if the board needs to take a vote on that. Could I respectfully disagree with that? We've we had we had several years ago determined that those would not be in the uh, in the downtown area. Mr. G, I think you're misunderstanding. What I'm saying is those uses correct are not allowed in the Schmood or any of the other underlying districts currently, it's only allowed in the highway business district. So what I was suggesting is that those uses get included in this table, but with the letter N next to all of them, just to reinforce that they are not allowed in the downtown, similar to what we're doing with the adult entertainment, just bringing it over to provide clarification. So, so an attorney, well, an applicant, an applicant, an applicant can't come in and say, well, you know, we could, you know, you could argue that this is considered a personal service, which is allowed in this area. So it's just to, it's just to make make it clear that those two uses are not allowed in the downtown. Mr. Chavano, I agree with that. Uh, I thought that you were, you were going to put a yes beside that. No, those. no, Lou, that wasn't the intention. No, thank you very all. much. It, okay. it was just my, my uh, uh, wrong interpretation. Okay, great. Thank you, Lou. I have no more questions, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, John, did you have anything else? No, um, as, as you know, I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to explain that to Mr. Gito. Thank you, Lou, for allowing me to do that. So um, again, the intention here is if, you know, if the board is willing to vote to refer this to the planning board, um, I will, you know, work with the, with the board to call a meeting as soon as possible to go over these changes. And then we'll schedule a public hearing um, on January 13th um, to meet the requirements of chapter 40A, and then we will, uh, we will go from there. Okay. Before we do, Scott, you have your hand up. I see it. You're learning, Scott. You're using the computer. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a ball. <laughs> hey! I'm a ball of fire here. <laughs> um, I remember back, we designated areas, believe it or not, adult entertainment was across the street from the police station and marijuana was supposed to go to, um, Campanelli Parkway. And it did. Right. So now, sitting on the zoning board at one time, if you put that in the in the table and you put an end there, 
I've seen the zoning board ignore the end because it's case by case and they could approve it. I, I don't, I can't speak for the ZBA, but legally, if something is prohibited, they're not allowed to allow it. So I, I don't, I don't understand how that, how that went forward. Because, because there's no such thing as use variances. Use variances are technically illegal. Right. But I've so seen that, that seems like that, that I, I'm not sure, Scott, there's anything we can do about that within the bylaw other than what we're doing. Um, you that can sounds appeal like that decision. That's the way you deal with that. Well, that's What's that, that's Lou? that's the only way out, Lou, is right, is that then it becomes the long drawn out cash cow. Right. So so, so Mr. Chabano's, uh, uh idea of adding that with the ends, I think, is is the right way to deal with that. Are you are you totally in agreement with that, Lou? That's okay. Yes. All right. And that's what I'm trying to do, um, Scott and Lou. I'm trying to, for those uses in particular, make sure that somebody can't find um, a loophole by making it clear that those aren't allowed. I'm all set, uh, Joe Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So I move that we make those necessary well, edits. If I, if I can first, I just want oh. to recognize recognize Steve. He's got his hand oh, up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just have one quick question, and, and this um, I, I don't think it's going to have a, any sort of uh, major change in my my opinion on this, and I, I'm ready to move forward. But just uh, more out of curiosity, uh, Mr. Charbonneau, I've noticed that the uh, uh, the special uh, permit granting authority that uh, has been chosen. I think in nearly all cases, if not all cases, in in this um, uh, change to the zoning, was the planning board. And I was wondering right. if, what the basis for that is, and, and why is not uh, one of the other pot potential uh, boards or committees that can do it. Well, be, um, that's a good question, Steve. And the reason for that is um, these. First of all, um, these uses, the vast majority, are also going to require site plan approval which would also be for the be before the planning board so it would make for um a you know one-stop shopping if you will but also that the the planning board the zoning board of appeals by law is a quasi judicial board um so the planning board has um a little bit more um broad ability to um bring in peer reviewers on a project and um conduct a review that's a little bit more comprehensive than legally this the zoning board of appeals could so those are the reasons for that steve is and also most of the uses currently it's the planning board that's a special permit review and we did we did keep the zoning board of appeals as the re the reviewer for uh the granting authority for cell towers because legally they're the ones who do permit cell towers so so that's why we did that we did that um for you know you know, to have it be, you know, oh, you know, the board that's doing site plan approval will also do special permit and also because the planning board has a little it has more wider capability of um, of conducting reviews and peer reviews on projects the ZBA might not have. I appreciate the, uh, the insight. Thanks. And Scott. I have to disagree with Mr. Mr. Charbonneau's um, uh, assessment of the zoning board that they don't have the means. The zoning board has the means to do even greater things than the planning board. They vetted um, 40 B's that that took anywhere from a year to some of them took three years. And they had plenty of people that were brought in as consultants and stuff like that. I don't I don't sell the zoning board short at all. I was a little confused why we're putting a lot of the, the power into the planning board's hands. And I, I don't even know if that's right to take it away from those people, just because you want to make it one stop shopping. There's a reason for each board and they have plenty of means to get anything they want vetted. Yeah, Scott, I, I agree with you. Uh... If you, Mr. Chairman, through you to yes, with all the speaker, uh, and, uh, the the zoning board of appeals in in major issues like that, I think 
have done um, a good job, and I think that uh, that that they have looked very carefully at uh, at the issues before them, and I think that uh, in those instances they also have more credibility. If you don't mind my saying so. Yeah, Mr. Kelly has his hand raised. Yes. Uh, so along those same lines, I'm not trying to take anything away from the Zoning Board of Appeals. I believe that they do the their job and what they're supposed to do. But what we've set up here is basically a, a review of a um, special permit. The Zoning Board of Appeals is, is basically for that, is to, is to appeal a decision or to, to try to go after something that is outside of zoning. All of the articles we put in here are within the zoning code. And there, Wallace was saying is if you want to do a particular item, we're asking you to go for a special permit. We're not asking you to go for a variance. These are not variance articles, which is what the zoning board is set up for. It's set up more for variances than for a special permit under the, the um, what is allowed or could be allowed or possibly could be allowed within the, um, the zoning code. And that's why we set it up so that the planning board would be dealing with that because it's much more of a planning issue. It's not an appeal. It's not supposed to be on an appellate level. We're not appealing anything that's going on here. Mostly planning board, that's what it is. I mean, the zoning board, that's what it's doing is appealing those items whereby you have a non-conforming lot or you have a non-conforming building within a zoning code or you're trying to put something there that doesn't fit into the zoning code. So that's, that's why the zoning board of appeals exactly what it is as an appeal board. We are not an appeal board and we're not putting this in as a special, plan, um, special permit for appeals. All we're saying is the special permit needs further review and it needs, it's also a, an item that could be rejected by the planning board and not allowed to be, depending on a case by case basis. But it's not an appeals and it shouldn't go to an, a, an appeals board because that's not what we're doing here. The only area where, where that might be, uh, uh, you might question that is the four to five story building portion of that. The other, th the other things are whether you're going to allow them or not. Uh, uh, like daycares, facilities, and so on. Uh, but I think that the four or five story buildings is something that's different from that. And I think that, uh, quite frankly, uh, I think you have a weakness in your, in your, uh, your bylaw in that regard, but, uh, but that's for another discussion. Yeah, I re okay, I, that's, let's leave it as another discussion because I do respectfully disagree with that. I think the planning board has as much um, teeth and as much regulation to be able to deal with that as the zoning board. And again, the four to five story, is, again, is not an appeal to the zoning code. It's a, it's a, it's a spe specifically a special permit, not an appeal. So, Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could add to Dan's comments, the other thing is... Um, you know, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals is the board that applicants go to to potentially appeal a decision by the planning board. So if the Zoning Board of Appeals has special permit granting authority on many of these things, then who are they do who are they who do they appeal it to? <laughs> They're gonna go back and appeal it to the same board that gave them the approval. So that's the other thing is if an applicant is not happy with a decision of the planning board, they can go to the zoning board of appeals to appeal that decision. So that, that again, to Dan's point, legally, that is, that is what the zoning board of appeals is set up for. I understand uh, Mr. Carrera's comment about 40 B's. Um, I, you know, I don't, you know, I, you know, the legislation set it up that 40 B's go before the ZBA. I, you know, again, I, I wasn't privy to conversations in terms of that decision, but he's right. You know, um, but yeah, the, 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 the Zoning Board of Appeals, as I stated, is usually a quasi-judicial board that hears variances and appeals to planning board decisions or decisions of the, um, of the building commissioner. Who appeals the, uh, the decisions of the planning board? The applicant or an abutter can appeal it and they go to the Zoning Board of Appeals and they hear that, they hear that appeal. The um, any citizen can appeal a decision of the zoning board of appeals if they have violated the zoning bylaw. Correct. But uh, the interpretation of 
the uh, the planning board as to whether or not they would have a four or five story building. Uh, where where does the appeal then only goes to the uh, or the is only allowed by the applicant, not the uh, not anyone in the town. No, it's no. it's it's no different, Mr. Gito. They can still go to the zone board of appeals to appeal it. You're correct. Any, any aspect, any aspect of a planning board approval can be appealed by a resident to the zoning board of appeals. That's why they have that 20 day appeal period in place for all projects. I thought that the appeal was to not to the uh, to the planning board or to the uh, zoning board of appeals. If you were appealing a decision of the zoning board of appeals, you would not appeal it to the zoning board. The zoning board of appeals would have to get appealed to the state. But That's the, correct. Right, but the as an appeal from the planning board would go to the zoning board of appeals, and then it would go to the state. I believe that's the process. I'm not a lawyer, but I believe that's the process when we looked into. Yeah, it I, th I think that's right, Dan. Yeah, you're right. I I I think we ought to get clarification of that sometime soon. Uh, I'm not suggesting that 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 needs to be done before we deal with the with this. The, uh, the zoning issue, but I think we ought to understand it. I think that the term special permit is 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 what's causing uh, dysfunctionality here because the zoning board is the one who grants special permits. So if you had thought of a different way to use that, if somebody appeals, your special permit and then they're going they're going to the zoning board it, it's there's already one there that's where i'm seeing the confusion well, going to start actually actually scott if you it, to look at the bylaws it's there's there's no one board that grants all special permits some are granted by the board of appeals some are granted by the planning board in fact i'm looking at the use table right now and in lots of in zoning districts for instance a nursing rest or convalescent home is allowed in every residential district by special permit by the Board of Appeals. Housing for the elderly is allowed in three different districts with a special permit through the Board of Appeals. So nonprofit day camps, nonprofit country hunting, fishing. So there are many uses within the bylaws that the that the Board of Appeals is, is the special uh, special permit granting authority outside of this. Right. And when right. I was when I was given the example to you, John, about the uh, 40B, I'm not just saying they only handle 40Bs. I'm saying that they have the tools to go to any avenue that they need to get information. They we hired outside attorneys. We fought land, fought things in land court, and then we won in land court. And then when the zoning board changed, I saw lots granted that didn't exist when the zoning changed in our bylaws. And then you saw them revert back because they were given 20,000 square foot variances. That's what I'm afraid of, is that anything can be appealed and granted because it's all case by case. Well, yeah. Um, well, what did, Ms. Scott, I guess my question is, what difference would it make whether you know, it's it's us or the um, the zoning board of appeals, and I think going back to John's first because point I think is in the real life world of entertainment, the planning board should be doing what's within their parameters. Now they're getting outside their parameters, and they're taking on another avenue of granting special permits that would normally be within the purview of. But you're drawing a fine but, line trying to stay within those. But I but right, and I beg to differ. We do have special granting uh, permit granting authority by the planning board. Yes. As part of our purview, we do do that on on a constant basis, actually. And um, so I don't see that that being an issue. But what I do see is the downtown has been sitting stagnant for a long time, and to try to keep the the, the building and try to keep this whole momentum going, having it with one board seems to be the best way to make that go. Um, bringing another board and another permit, you know, another avenue that the, that the developer or anybody has to go through is only going to just stagnate this whole um, process that's going on with the zoning board, with the zoning. 
So I'm not sure why we would need to add another board, another level into the whole process. I guess that's what my, what would, I mean, you're making a distinction between the zoning board and the planning board as if the zoning board is a better board than the planning board. And I don't, I'm not sure where that's coming from, Scott. It's kind of a, not, is that a personality not, thing or what is, the, the authority is still that, there. Excuse Dan, me? I'm not making that distinction. What I'm going by is you're, you're, you just got on this, these boards and stuff like that. I've been around them a long time and I've watched them have to function in two separate entities. And, and one checks and balance the other. And I understand your push, push, rush, rush. Let's get building down there and all that, and, let, and let's just go. But that other I, I, I don't think... things that there's impacts and, there's, and people have the right to appeal things. But we're not... Sometimes they don't want to go through all yours and say, well, now we got to go to the zoning board and appeal this. And and they they miss the date. They don't know how many days it is. But that's what's going to that's what that's the process you're putting them in because they're going to have to come before us, and then after they get through our process, they have to go before the zoning board of appeals, and then come back to us again because the planning could change. So they have to go through the whole process three different times with what you're asking to get done. Whereas if it's kept of one board, is they're not doing that unless they're going to appeal it. They appeal our decision, then they would have to go to the zoning board. Well, that was only if they would be disagreed. But right now you're forcing somebody to go planning board, zoning board, planning board to make the decision happen. Right. Part part of the part of the purpose of of you know redoing the downtown bylaw is to create a more um, predictable, straightforward permitting path. It's not to shortchange the review. It's not to rubber stamp things. It's to make the process more predictable for developers. Um, so. You know, we just had an instance with 19 Camden Street with the plan with the self storage where the planning board came to a point where they were done with their review, and then they they went before Concom and it got held up for almost a year. Now it's back before the planning board, so we're trying to. Um, well, evidently there must have been an issue if it got held up. It didn't get held up just for no reason at all. No. No, but that was but the Concom stepped in with where they were supposed now to. Now you want to take over Concom's strength too? No, 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 no. That's not that's not what we're saying. We just all we're saying is that there there is checks and balances within the whole system about what's going on right now. But if you add another layer into the process, you're just lengthening out the problem. You're talking about taking a process that now could go on for well over a year just to get through those two boards three times. And I, that's what I don't, I, that's what we were trying to avoid, Scott. And I just don't see why that, you know, whether one board, one board's better than the other board, which is kind of what you're saying. And I don't understand that at this point. Not what I'm saying. Well, well if, if I can... need to do different things and I'm if, not going to, I'm not going to argue that we want to, we want to cut the time just because we want to cut the time. Some things have to be well, looked we... at. All right. So why if would I we... can, excuse me, gentlemen, if, if I can, we, we could go on debating this. I, I think, there's some some uh, relative comments on both sides of this. Um, and when it comes to things being held up for a year and so forth, I mean, I would say to some of these committees, meet more often. I mean, we're doing that here tonight. And I know sometimes it pay, takes people just forever just to get. So we hold mm -hmm. more. And I do believe this is the conversations, you know, that we, we started about earlier is we need to have these these sessions where whether they're one-on-one -on -one at a coffee shop if you see each other or we have people come in and look at this because you know i agree i mean and when it's all said we all say we want to do the the right job for the residents and the business people yet the process doesn't seem to have that as well so there's definitely a, a, a you know a merit to streamlining the process so it's easier for everybody to understand but then the the goals and responsibilities of each board and commission you know, have to be spelled out so the, the public and the people that use those systems understand it. Because as they say, in the in the lack of leadership and a lack of progress uh, process, people make up their own. You know, and that's what we owe to everybody that comes in to use the town of Stoughton is one equal lay playing field where you know the responsibilities and the, the authority of these committees and a process. We've talked so many in the past years uh, everybody that used the word process more than I've ever heard it before never put one together. So maybe we should take this conversation as that challenge that where we can do that because Scott, you, you make a lot of good points and I, I agree with you. Well, Joe, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something in my last 
last my last term on the board be prior. The only reason why we have a checks and balance sheet from the building department is because I made it happen with Mr. Tonus. Yeah. Okay. Because things were getting granted. They were going outside of CONCOM. They were going outside of planning board that said, oh, these trees shouldn't have been cut up to this guy's backyard. And that's why there's a check and balance sheet now, Dan, that goes to every department, board of health and everything. Yeah. That's but why. I fully, I fully agree with that. I'm 100% behind you on all of that. Those, those, that part of it and permitting process, 100%. I just okay. think that this we did put a process in place as far as this particular downtown zoning board goes and the, the process of how these permits go through. Once it's read through, everybody can follow through the process. We uh, Does the overall zoning code follow this? I, I agree it doesn't. But we weren't changing the overall zoning code. Does it need to be worked on? Yes. Joe, we it, might need to get uh, something from town council that, that will waive this for them so that they can do it. If there's anything that's a hink in it somehow, then we'll have to address it. I think that's the only easy way out. Because that, that, and that, Scott, I'm fine with that. We did have Scott down town council review it. We can have the reviewer specifically for this also. But town council has reviewed this this code the way it is right now. Yeah. Well, th there's a lot of things. I always look at the what if end of things. This the stuff you've done is great. It's it's the stuff that's going to take off. But I'm always worried about the one thing that puts the town on the hook, and it happens all the time. If right. we get it cleared right. up now. It just flies through town meeting and people say what a great thing the planning board's going to do. It's going to streamline stuff. That's all I'm worried about. That, and Scott, I'm, I'm very well open for that. And, you know, have that discussion, I'm all for it. I just, like I say, I'm, if we need to have town council review it again, I'm all for that too. I just, what I don't, when I was trying to avoid, and I'm sorry if I just stepped on it, but I thought it, it sounded like there was a, a personality thing between the um, not, planning not board at all. and the, and the zoning board. Legal, because, black and white. I th I'm fine with that. If, if it's a legal issue, then let's let's have that discussion. And I think we, you know, put it before town council again. Which, like I said, we did. We actually had, you know, we had consultants build, putting this together. So we had, you know, consultants in that we hired. These people, you know, legal. They put together zoning codes all the time, and everything in there that they've reviewed seems to be good. And I, as far as I know, the town council reviewed it. So we can have that done again. I'm, I don't have an issue with part of that. I, I think we should have that done again. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank right, you. Thank you. No problem, Scott. Joe, Thank you. You can move on. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, Scott, I'd like to have a cup of coffee with you yeah. someday. <laughs> no, not a problem, Scott. No need to apologize. That's what we're here to do. You know, so we just want to get this over to the planning board so they can start their public hearing process. Absolutely. And I know that uh, you know that you've heard the commission, uh, the commitment there that they're going to review this again. So, so with that, is there? Um, I, I think I got everything. Is there any further questions of anyone before I entertain a motion? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman. Scott. Motion to allow the Stoughton Center District rezoning to go forward so they may hold their hearings and stuff. Second. Okay, motion been made and seconded. Uh, and again, for, for Ms. Ms. Um, Ms. Dayton, uh, the motion was made to send this article to the finding uh, to the uh, planning board to conduct their public hearings it was seconded by deborah roberts so with that is there any further questions of the board mr cavey no questions mr carrara no questions mr Gito. no questions miss roberts no questions okay on the motion to approve mr cavey yes mr carrara yes mr Gito. yes miss roberts yes and the chair votes in favor. Okay, so with that, that is the last item. Uh, on Excuse our me, Mr. Chairman. Madam Vice Chair, please. Uh, there was one more uh, question Sorry. on the table mm -hmm. as a follow up from our last meeting, and that was uh, mentioned by Dr. Grimm. If we would like to entertain having another special town meeting in February after the public hearings and it comes back to us and so forth and so on. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, we did talk about that. It's something that um, we should look at now so that we can get it scheduled. So, you know, we can have that conversation and um, have it on our next agenda. If that's what we all decide to do, because I want to make sure that we're all involved in that conversation, you know, especially you know, including the planning board. And um, so that we're all on the same page. That's all. But yes, without a doubt, I'll, I'll speak with her and, 
and get that conversation going. We'll have it on the next agenda for a conversation, if need be. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration. You're entirely welcome. Okay, so um, with that, uh, on the motion, uh, the chair votes in favor, and um, I will that, call that a vote. So, uh, Mr. Kelly or Mr. Charbonneau, anything in closing? No, I want to thank the board for their time, and um, I, I, I have an open door policy with anybody. So, um, I know Scott. This is the first time that um, you know I've I've been involved in a presentation before the board with you on the board. So, if you want to give me a call or stop by to talk about the Stoughton Center zoning and and what you brought up tonight, feel free. Um, anyone at any time can give me a call to talk about this. I appreciate that, John. And uh, for myself, um, I appreciate all the time you guys have put into this, and thank you very much for this meeting tonight, and that we can get this whole thing to go forward. I think we're all trying to get to the same spot, so um, I appreciate everybody's opinions on this thing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Also, with that, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So made. Second. Uh, motion made to adjourn by Ms. Roberts, second by Mr. Carrara. On the vote, Mr. Cavey? Yes. Ms. Carrara? Mr. Carrara? Yes. Mr. Gito. Yes. And Ms. Roberts. Yes. Chair votes in favor. The meeting is now concluded. Uh, thank you all for attending. And to those of our residents who are watching us remotely, uh, we thank you for joining us. And uh, to everybody watching, have a please a, a safe, healthy, and very happy Thanksgiving Day. Thank you all. <laughs>